Um, welcome to the Swing Speaker Series. My name is Michelle. Um, like I said today, uh, we have a really exciting topic, classroom management. And this is a topic that will resonate with anyone who's ever been in front of a classroom. Um, it's a topic that a lot of people kind of refer to as like good classroom management or bad classroom management. And today we'll be talking more specifically about like, what are people talking about when they say that? And we will share real life examples of how you can create a focused classroom environment with some really concrete classroom management techniques. And just a couple of notes about the format. Um, if this is the first time you've joined our speaker series, you'll notice that you don't see yourself on the screen. This is a webinar format. It's not a Zoom uh, meeting format. So you won't see yourself on screen. You will be muted and you will have free reign of the chat window and the Q&A window. So um, feel free to chat amongst yourselves as we go through the presentation. Just remember Zoom will record everything you say and it knows your name. So don't say anything here that you wouldn't say in front of a classroom. And um, as we go through the presentation, we're gonna do things a little bit differently today. So historically what we've done is we save Q&A for the end, but this is such a, a rich topic. Um, our speaker, Keila Smith had this great idea. Well, let's have questions throughout the presentation because we know they're gonna come up. So what we'll be doing is um, as you uh, listen and have questions, go ahead and start putting them in the Q&A window. And then um, we're gonna pause in certain segments and then take questions. And I think that'll lead to some really interesting discussions. So I'd love to go ahead now and um, interview, um, introduce our speaker. I'm delighted to introduce Keila Smith. She's currently the liaison between the Swing Substitute Teacher Community and our partner schools. And she's a former teacher and principal. She's got a career history in designing and implementing community and professional development and academic programs for diverse audiences. And she has extensive experience of managing classrooms and also teaching classroom management to others. In fact, um, when I had the pre-call with her, I felt like I got like a master class in classroom management and I never even met a teacher. It was awesome. So um, one more fun fact about Keila, she spent three years in Valencia, Spain as the North American Language and Cultural Assistant for the Spanish Minister of Culture. So um, just love to hear that that's a fun fact. And so she's obviously fully bilingual in Spanish and English. Keila, welcome to the Swing Speaker Series. Thank you all so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and um, give you all some valuable and important tools and tips for classroom management. Um, so thank you all for having me. Great. Um, before we get started, I'd love to hear a little bit more about you and your teaching journey. Um, obviously, you have a very impressive resume. Um, I'm curious to know how you got to the point where you've mastered classroom management and why you feel it's so important to substitute teaching. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, classroom management in my early days of teaching, it, it honestly was baptism by fire. Um, I was working at a Title I school um, in a very urban area, and I just didn't, you know, I didn't have support. And so a lot of the things that I learned in classroom management um, was from seeing other teachers in the building. Um, and I, I started out in middle school. So that unique and fun age group. So learning by seeing, um, and not always right, but as my you know, time and education progressed inside the classroom and also with doing things on campus, um, really took some things along from other teachers that I was seeing on campus, good and the bad, and really put that in my toolkit to um, really master classroom management. And I will say, and I will touch on this, but I will say that a lot of it is about relationships. So once I understood that, um, it was just, it was a huge game changer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, substitute teaching is important and I've been there um, from teaching in the classroom as the teacher, but then coming back when I returned to the States, I went into subbing. Um, it's important because it really gives you, it gives you a different perspective. Um, it gives you a different filter. You're able to, you're able to navigate a lot of situations and learn um, a lot from being a sub. And so, and at right now, just where we're at, substitute teaching is vital, right? It's, it's necessary. It's, it's really, um, it's fueling a lot of campuses because, you know, subs are needed. Mm -hmm. So going right in hand with classroom management, um, you know, speaking about this today, I just feel it's going to empower our subs even more. 
Right, thanks. Um, I want to set the stage for this topic. Um, I want to share why this topic is so important to swing and why it's critical to the success and the happiness of swing subs. We hear a lot from our sub community, um, especially um, newer subs, that they want more transparency into what the school's expectations are of guest teachers. Um, we also know that classroom management is the number one piece of feedback we get from schools. So I want to start a little bit by defining what this classroom management thing is and why it's so important to schools. And the reason I want to lay this out is because um, it's a, because of how often it's brought up in feedback. Um, I spend a lot of time reading feedback on both the sub side and the school side. And I see a lot of comments on classroom management, like an admin might write, oh, this teacher has great classroom management. And you know, the inverse might be, oh, this teacher needs to work on their classroom management. And I kind of get the impression that this, like, this is like pretty standard feedback and it's pretty generic. And it almost seems like this is just what you say when something goes wrong, but it's, it's not really specific. And I guess my question is like, if I'm a teacher and I get this feedback, Michelle needs work on classroom management and I don't have any specifics, I don't have any examples, I have no way to contact the admin and find out what that's about. Like, how do I even know where to start? Yeah, honestly, you don't because classroom management has so many components to it. It's not just about showing up and running a class and that class going perfectly um, or incorrect. It's so many um layers to it and so really understanding where you need to um areas you need to reinforce areas you need to you know adjust in it really takes you know talking with the sub getting more detailed feedback from the school um and then really piecing it all together um, but it is it's so complex and it's not as we will see today through this, um, you know, through this talk, it's not a one size fits all. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to be um, getting into some some details in the future. But um, one question, one thing I also want to address is um, the substitute teacher's point of view. So, excuse me, when I'm reading sub feedback, I see comments that you know this school is tough or that school is tough. And my question is like, is classroom management this thing that you like pull out of your toolkit when you have a tough school or does it benefit um, you and the students when you're in a situation where, you know, the students are a little bit more, you know, less rowdy, a little bit less disruptive. Um, is this like a tool that you use just when you have a problem or is this just like kind of like a, I don't want to say lifestyle style, but maybe like philosophy. Yeah. So with classroom management, I will say this to to you know speak to your to your question. It really is. It's embedded in who you are. It truly is. You know, as a substitute teacher, as a swing sub, as an educator, it is embedded in who you are. And also, the additional piece to that is and how you facilitate the learning environment. And so, if you approach it and understand it from that perspective. No, you shouldn't just be, you know, using these tools in, you know, a difficult classroom. No, you shouldn't just be using these tools in, um, you know, the perfect classroom and everything's going great. It's who you are when you show up as an educator with these students and facilitating that learning environment. And notice that I said facilitating, not dictating. <laughs> because that's a large piece of it too, facilitating that. So, so that would be the biggest thing for classroom management. It's not an on and off switch. Um, you know, it's not an on and off switch. It's embedded in who you are and also, you know, with how you're facilitating that learning environment. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of dovetails with what you were talking about earlier in your career when you kind of realized, had that light bulb moment that, you know, this is about building relationships. Right. And, I mean, embedded in who you are, that makes perfect sense. Um, I do you want to ask one more question on um, tough schools? Because we do see a lot of this feedback from substitutes. So if a sub is concerned about taking assignments in these schools, do you think classroom management can help you, you develop like the capacity and the confidence to manage these classrooms that tend to be on the disruptive side? And I would imagine if you had confidence to walk into any classroom, that would just kind of open up your opportunity um, to be able to take assignments at more schools than you had previously been, felt comfortable with. Definitely. But I will say that, um, and this is also going to touch back on, you know, how do you know where to start with that feedback? So I will say that 
with classroom management, because it is embedded in who you are, you have to understand who you are as a swing sub, right? So if, you know, you know, you're going to learn a lot from being at a difficult, you know, maybe in a, you know, a difficult, um, and I don't want to say a difficult school, but, you know, maybe a school that you've heard things about disruptive and the kids are, it's a lot going on. Um, knowing yourself to know, you know what, maybe, maybe I don't need to take those assignments right now, you know, um, because this isn't about, well, let me try to go use these tools in this environment and, you know, rise to the occasion. So then I can become the best teacher. I think it starts at knowing yourself. Um, and so that may mean, and I think this is perfectly fine. That may mean, you know, I have a, I have a tough time at those schools. So let me start at some other schools or let me start at a, at another grade level. Maybe elementary is my grade level. I'm having a very tough time in middle school and high school. And that just comes with, um, knowing yourself, understanding your strengths too in the classroom and, um, the clientele that you like to work with <laughs> within that. But I will say, um, regardless of the, the specific building, um, you can always strengthen wherever you're at. So please don't get too wrapped up in, I want to use this in this setting because, you know, so I can rise to the occasion. It really is wherever you're at, because remember, it's embedded in you. You're just re reinforcing that. And when you get to that point, there are some telltale things that you're going to know that then stepping into a different environment classroom with that, it's just a no brainer. That's great. That's like some myth busting right there. Um, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay. Now I'd like to get into the um, techniques. And for those of you who may have joined a minute or so late, we're going to run this a little bit differently. We're going to um, have Q&A throughout the presentation. And what I'll be doing is pausing um, after each kind of segment, and then we'll take questions. And um, I think that uh, we'll get some uh, lively dialogue out of that, that they, in the way that we usually do. So um, Keila, I'm going to go ahead and invite you to um, take it away. Awesome. Thank you. Um, before I jump in, I just want to state I love analogies. Um, and when I was really sitting down and going over classroom management and how to talk about that so we can all understand it, um, the analogy that I want to use for this discussion and for future discussions as well is we're taking a plane ride. Um, we're taking a plane ride with students. And so classroom management, as I begin to unfold this, um, I want us to look at it as we're on a plane and the people who are showing up to get in those seats on the plane are the students. We're the flight attendant and <laughs> we're also the pilot. And so with that framework, understanding that these students are coming in, are you know, about to board our flight, enter the classroom, um, we have to set an expectation for things that could happen on the plane, um, turbulence, what need, you know, if the plane, something happens to the plane, um, how to handle those situations. And so as we walk through this, I'm going to keep referring back to the plane ride that we're taking students on and understanding too that with classroom management, there is a final destination. There is a final destination and it's important that we get students and ourselves to that final, final destination safely um, so that you know, we can have a smooth ride. So the first part of this um, onboarding with bringing our, um, you know, our students into the classroom is some pre-work that you have to do um, as part of the classroom management, as part of managing your plane and your students on that plane. And that pre-work, I wanna talk about a couple of things that really you're setting yourself up for success um, within that class, classroom management framework. The first thing is reviewing the lesson plan. Um, this, is, this is just key. 
flight attendants are not just coming to the airport and they don't know like, okay, how many people are gonna be on this flight? Um, where is the flight going? They've, they've been given information ahead of time to, to know what is going to take place on this plane. And the same is, the same happens for us. When you're reviewing that lesson plan, you're giving yourself the game plan. You're going over the game plan to, to know, okay, we've got a break here, or maybe I need to insert a break here. Um, I don't understand this part, so let me slow down, or maybe you know I need to ask for clarification. But within the framework of classroom management, reviewing the lesson plan is vital. Um, the second part of the pre-work is reviewing the notes on the swing platform. Um, the day before, I would say, as soon as you get, as soon as you accept it, um, really reviewing that information on there. Um, in terms of COVID, uh, COVID protocol, um, timing, what time do you need to show up at the school, really preparing for this flight. Um, and doing that ahead, you know, giving yourself enough time. So if there are questions that come up during that review of the notes on the, on the platform, you have time to reach out to someone. Um, you know, being in my role in the with swing as the substitute teacher coordinator, there are situations where subs, they're, they're just not prepared and really talking with them through like, if I would have given myself 30 more minutes to show up to the school, to find parking, to get to the, you know, get settled in, use the restroom, the tone could have been a little bit better, you know, for the morning um, before the students came into the classroom. And so those are two huge pre-work um, tools that you can use with helping you with classroom management. And then the, the third piece of the, the pre-work is really making sure that you understand, you know, do you have a seating chart? You know, did the teacher leave you with a seating chart? Um, most schools there are, they're gonna give you that folder with, you know, contact numbers, you know, where to locate the restroom, um, these are the key people to contact or, you know, to help you. So making sure that you review that information because we know life happens in the classroom. And then you're like, wait, the seating chart, okay, this kid is sitting over here. I don't think he's supposed to. So doing that pre-work ahead of time um, to really set yourself up because that is a key part of classroom management. Great. Um, one of the questions that comes up is, um, I've heard this from teachers where, you know, they arrive at the school and they made a point to arrive, you know, 30 minutes early or 15 minutes early. And the first thing you need to do is like, use the restroom, put away their lunch, find out where the, pack, the faculty lounge is. And the admin kind of grabs them and kind of tries to shepherd them to the classroom. What would you advise that they do in that situation? When they are trying to get settled in? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, once again, going back to knowing yourself, if you feel you do need that time, um, definitely we want to be respective of the administrators when they're trying to get us to where we need to be. But I would encourage you all when there is that, that chance of they've gotten you to the room and there is still time, communicating with them. You know, Ms. Smith, thank you so much for showing me, you know, where I need to be at today. Um, I know I have 10 more minutes before, you know, 10 or 15 more minutes before the students come in, you know, can I take a moment and, you know, go to the restroom, get set up, or I think it is important to communicate, um, to communicate what you're needing as well, you know, um, and anything could come out of that, you know, by you communicating that, that administrator could come back and say, you know what, Ms. Smith, let me get another teacher in here so they can, you know, so I know you said 10, but let us give you 15 minutes. Let me bring another teacher in here just to get the kids in while you get yourself situated. Um, so communicating that, but also understanding, you know, and knowing yourself. If you know you're going to be rushed, definitely you want to make sure you're communicating that. And I would just say respectfully, you know, if you know, okay, it's five minutes and she finished, um, you're going to have to make some adjustments as well. Did that answer the question? Yeah, no, that's perfect. I think that um, communicating your needs and see if there's like, you know, any um, 
happy medium or give and take that you need right. to, to be, but that if you're nervous about it, definitely get there a little bit early. Um, we do have a question from Heather and I've heard this a lot. Have you ever been in a situation where you, you didn't have a seating chart and that kind of sent things sideways? Heather, I love this question. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and I won't even give too much background with that, but yes. So let me address that really quick. Um, because I've been in the classroom and, you know, I've called in for sub and then I'm like, I didn't put the seating chart in there. So life happens, life happens. So a tool I want to give you all when life happens and there is no seating chart, um, you've put eyes on, on the classroom, right? You don't need to now sit and do a diagram. One of the tools I want to give you is you can do an informal assessment. One of the things I would do um, I had the roster, I would do boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Um, and that's just for, from some experiences and knowing how students, how they, girls group together, boys group together. And then there's chaos because the girls want to talk, the boys want to run around the room and play. So there is no seating chart. Okay. So I think I'm going to do a boy, girl combination. Okay. Um, I think I may even and this is a little bit more advanced, but I'm gonna put it out there. I think I may even, when they're coming in the door and I'm greeting them, tell them to take a seat. And then when I come into the classroom, you're just informally putting eyes on the dynamic. Okay, well, all the boys set together. So now you're sort of informally seeing, okay, these two students group together and they're already like play fighting and, so now that you've entered that classroom and put eyes on saying, hey, you guys, thank you all for getting seated. Um, I'm just going to make some quick adjustments with seating today before we, you know, before we jump into the game plan for today and learning for today, because you've already seen, they've already given you the answer with where we want to be at, right? And so informally, you've just watched to see where did they put themselves at. And now you're saying, mm -mm, this isn't going to work. So let me do this real quick and you're changing them. And I will. I wanna add this too. Um, it's okay to change again during the class period. If you see things are not working out, um, it's okay to slow down and, you know, change that seating plan. Um, but there are some other tools that come with that and not just an abrupt, we're, we're changing seats, you know? Um, so, but it's okay to, to course correct as well. Okay, um, I know that you've got some other stuff you wanna get to. We do have one more question mm -hmm. around, um, and I know that you haven't been in the classroom during COVID times, but we have a question coming in about what can you do if students don't wanna follow the COVID-19 seating instructions? Is that just kind of the same thing? Oh, right, um, and, and I'm You're sorry, and referring to like Michelle, you said the COVID um, protocol mm -hmm. for the campus. Yeah, or like the seating instructions, if you're supposed to sit um, socially distanced or something like that. Yeah, um, so I think all of that is gonna tie into the, the environment, the community you're building within, within that classroom. So students are making sure that they are responsible, taking care of themselves and following the community guidelines for the classroom. And we're gonna touch on that. So if you, but real quick, if you have someone that's not following that, once you go over that protocol for how this plane, you know, is, how this ride is gonna be, you can redirect the students back to that. You know, Michelle, I see that, you know, you're out. Michelle, can you look at number three and revisit where we're supposed, what we're supposed to be doing for COVID protocol? Okay, that's on the board. Okay, we're supposed to be six feet apart. Okay, please take a moment and do that. And we'll Great. touch on that, um, but that's another tool as well. All right, looks like that's it on um, seating you. We can go ahead and move along. And one more thing, going back to the seating chart because that is such a big deal. Um, Heather, also, you know, if you have the roster for everyone, you know, you can number kids off when they come in and put those numbers down so that when you're seated, you can write out the numbers on a sheet of paper and put like the initials or something like that. If you're more, you need 
you know, you need to see it on paper to have documentation of that. Just number them off when they're coming in, write that on a sheet of paper. When they say their name, you can put their name and initials next to it as well. Great, thanks. Okay, it looks like we were gonna um, talk about establishing the process to manage surprises. That sounds juicy. Yeah, so the next part of this is, um, you know, you know where you're playing. You, we, we know where we're going. Um, we know what time frame our, you know, our plane ride is. So now um, they show up, they're ready to board. <laughs> and understanding that that boarding process uh, is different for elementary, middle school and high school, right? Um, so with that is that within this framework now, part of classroom management, the tools is going, the first tool is you're establishing the process to manage surprises along this plane ride. Um, we see it as adults on the plane when before that plane takes off, they always go over what, you know, the airbags, seat belts, every plane ride, they're establishing if, you know, the people who are in the exit role, they come by and talk to you, you have to verbally say, yes, you will assist with, so as adults, we already see this playing out. They're establishing what needs to happen on this plane should something occur or whatnot. We're actually doing the same thing in the classroom. Um, and so what that looks like, what this tool looks like um, in the classroom, the students are now in the classroom, they're seated. You are going over your guidelines, the guidelines for the classroom. And one of the things I want to start saying in this conversation is the community, because it really is a community. Um, so when the students enter, you're going over, okay, um, you know kids are going to have questions. So, you know, when you all have a question as a class, and let me take a step back here. When they come in, you're having this as a whole class discussion, respectfully. We're not just talking over each other, but that looks like you know, good morning, you all. Thank y'all for showing up today. Um, before we jump in and start our learning today, um, I want us to all come together and we're gonna just talk about a couple of things so we're all on the same page for today. Um, the first thing we're gonna talk about is if you have a question, what should you do, right? And now, depending on your level, all, you know, elementary uh, hands are gonna start going up or kids are gonna start shouting out, you know, they're gonna get excited or not. Um, and so you're going to round that in. And so if you already know they need to raise their hand and the teacher has stated that in the seat, you know, in her plan, in her folder, then you're giving them an opportunity to speak and saying, OK, great, Michelle. Thank you. So if we all have a question, if someone has a question, we know that we're raising our hand. We're not just shouting out. Now you set the tone like that is established. Right. Um, I would even write it on the board. Like number one, you know, or have a question, question mark, raise your hand, do not shout out. Um, another part of that process, right? And making sure that this plane ride, that this class environment is smooth, um, you know, if they need to go to the restroom, because kids always have to go to the restroom. Some decide to leave on their own, some decide. So also in that pre-work, you know what the teacher has set out. If, she says, well, they have to sign, you know, the clipboard before they leave. So making sure you understand that. Um, so once again, going back to the class. Okay, so thank you all. We've got number one down. If someone has a question, we know we need to raise our hand and we're not shouting out. Um, what about restroom? Can someone share with me, you know, if you have to go to the restroom, what do you need to do? What, what, what do we do? What do you need to do? And, you know, understand that it's not always going to be the truth. So that's why you need to know the truth from the teacher. Because <laughs> kids are going to be like, oh, we can just walk out. Okay, let me hear from someone else. Keela, what, 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 what do you do when you need to go to the classroom? You know, I mean, when you need to go to the restroom. So setting that, okay, we know when we need to go to the restroom, you need to sign the clipboard and take the pass. Number two, restroom, question mark, you've written that on the board. And the third thing I would say is if you need to get up out of your seat, those are really like the top three in classrooms. They need to go to the restroom, they have a question, and you know, 
Um, and they're moving around like they need to get go get a Kleenex or go ask, you know, get up out of their seat for something. What's the protocol on that? And so you've established those things, but everyone is on the same page about that. Just like on the plane, they not, they're not just saying that to the first role. Um, and so when you have that established, you're setting the stage so that when things come up, you're referring back to that. Um, and the other piece, the tool that I wanna talk about within setting the stage when the students are entering the classroom and getting settled in is going back to the plane, we don't know what everyone has in their luggage that's underneath that plane. We don't know what everyone's brought in their luggage when they've shown up. And so bringing that to the classroom, we don't know, we don't know what baggage these students are entering the classroom with. We don't know what their morning was like right before they got to the classroom. We don't know what their night the previous day was like. If, you know, the kids are homeless, if they didn't, if they got kicked out of their homes last night and they're coming with some attitude this morning and they're tired and they don't want to hear anything. We don't know any of that. All we know is they showed up. They showed up. And so I say that to say that is a tool, a very important tool in classroom management because you have to slow down and understand that when they show up for this learning journey, right? Um, there are gonna be some adjustments along the way, but you have to be very observant and you're doing some informal things that we will touch on to help you understand that, okay, this kid, he may, there may be some trauma things going on, right? So I've gotta keep my eyes on him. This kid, he's falling asleep a lot. You know, so I have to keep my eyes on, on him. One of the things I do want to touch on so you can see early on, like what type of baggage? Are we just bringing a backpack? Did, you know, does someone not even show up with luggage today? You know, you need your toothbrush and all of those things. One of the informal things you can do when your class is getting settled in, um, just take a quick check-in, you know? Good morning, good afternoon. Thank y'all for getting to class on time today. Just a we're just going to do a check in one through five with fingers, you know, with your fingers, just one, you're, you're like, I'm not doing that great five. I'm doing a great, I'm doing amazing. I had an amazing breakfast today. I'm ready to start this day. Just a quick check in from, you know, one to five, where are you all at? So now you see that you've got, you know, most of the class, they've got their thumb, you know, it's a one. So that's going to give you some insight too, you know, or you're seeing, okay, wow, most of the class didn't eat breakfast today. I really have to make sure I'm navigating this plane a little differently because they're hungry. Attention span is not going to be there. So that's an informal assessment you can do that what takes two minutes that now you're able to see a little bit of like, what's, what's going on with the luggage here, right? Um, and even another question you can ask, you know, how many of you all, you know, slept great last night? You're well rested. Because now I'm thinking as a sub, I need to see who is like, who's alert, right? So that's another check-in you can do with students to see, okay, what, what's, what's going on with the luggage here? And one piece before we move into the next session, um, I did mention the trauma piece. Students are bringing in, they're, they're bringing in everything with them. And so you going back to with that classroom management, knowing yourself, we know some students can take us to zero to a hundred, just like that. So you have to know yourself and manage your emotions so that, you know, if you know you yell, you know, you get upset when you're, you're managing that because that could trigger that could trigger something in another student to then start, anything could happen. That could trigger another student. So you have to manage your emotions. I did want to ask a, a follow-on question to um, the assessment that you mentioned with holding up the fingers. Like, what's the follow-on for the teacher? You know, I'm observing most people are kind of feeling on the low end of their mood today. Like, do you respond to that? Do you react? Um, how does that play out? 
Yeah. And so when you've noticed um, a majority or when you notice that, slow down, slow down. I know you all have the lesson plan and we know that we've got to cover that. Um, but you can slow down and do a check-in. So let's just say you do a check-in and you see that most of these kids, you know, they didn't sleep well last night. You know what, everyone, you know, thank you for, thank you all for giving me, you know, where you're at this morning. Before we jump into the day, we're going to do something real quick. I need everyone to stand up. Okay. Everyone gets up and you know, you're going to have those kids, man, I don't want to get up. I don't, thank you for participating, Keela. Stand on up because we're all, it's a community here. Stand on up. You know, you're not even playing on that. You're not even playing into that. Okay. Do five jumping jacks. Everyone five jumping jacks or raise your hands in the air. Or, you know, kids love to high five each other, you know, um, you know, high five two people in the room, you know, and I will say know, know your students, know your demographic. High school kids, you're pulling teeth with them. So if you're going to ask them to do jumping jacks, it's probably not going to happen with the high school kids. Elementary kids all day long, you know, um, you know, so with the high school kids, you're going to have to get creative. You know, that could look like high five or, you know, do your do your favorite dance move, you know. So you've got that kid who won't move. So you're like, OK, Michelle, so you don't like to dance? OK. You know, and you're not, you know, you don't need to be like, well, Michelle, you didn't dance. You need to. But you're getting them. I've got a sleepy class. Let me get their bodies moving. Let me get their bodies moving a little bit before we jump into this. You know what I'm saying? Or, and easily, like everyone, I just want you to like let out a big yawn. Mm -hmm. So those are simple things that you're that informal assessment you did. You can step in to you know navigate that. Great, thanks. Um, I did want to give a shout out to Susan and Tasha. I see your questions in the chat. I think those questions are going to be really great um, topics for the next section. So we'll take those after we go through the um, the next section, which is uh, you're going to start talking by uh, managing the relationship, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So the next part of this, um, I'm going to be just giving you all some, some other tools. And the first tool within classroom management um, is managing the relationships because Classroom management, it is about relationships. Um, and as I told, you know, especially when I went over to the administrative side and there were conflicts with teachers and students, I always told them, we've got to break down in this relationship, you know? And if someone's not talking to someone or someone has an attitude, it's not going to go well. So managing the relationship, the tools, that tool, one of the things within that tool is give students roles. Students, they love to help. Doesn't look the same for all students, but give them roles. So the next question you may ask is, well, I don't even know. I don't even know these kids. I don't even know, like, I don't know what to. Once again, going back to the plane, the people on the aisle, like in the exit row, like they're not asking, you know, they're not saying, you know, you, they're saying like, you're on this role, you have to do this. So giving students roles could look like, you know, when you get them settled in, um, you know, we're, I need a classroom helper today. We need someone that's going to help with, I need three people that are going to help with passing out papers, you know, and you can have some set roles in your toolbox already instead of just showing up like, okay, um, door, who's going to hold the door? Um, classroom helper. So you can have like I'm always, when I'm in a classroom, I'm always gonna have um, someone that holds the door when we leave class, um, someone that's going to check the roles to make sure, you know, all students picked up their books or picked up the trash, you know, the, the desk were arranged. So have some roles already established in your, um, in your toolbox. And ask students, if you have a long-term sub assignment, um, and maybe even if not, like, Ask the students, like, how do you all like helping out? I'm going to pass out a post-it note. You're going to keep it on your desk for the remainder of the classroom. But I just want you to write down two things, two ways that you would like to help out in class and write your name on it. Long-term sub assignment, that's a game changer because you keep those, you keep those post-it notes, you have those. Okay, I see that, you know, Keila and Michelle, they love, they love like passing out papers. So why am I going to choose Robert? 
Like they've clearly told you that, right? And so that is managing those relationships. And within that, you guys, you praise them. Like that's that relationship building part. Like, man, Keila, I really appreciate you, appreciate you, you know, handing out the papers today. Thank you. You know, thank you. Can you do that tomorrow as well? Like everyone wants to receive feedback. You know, everyone wants to know that they are seen and they're valuable. Um, I'm going to also touch on managing in relationship that one student or two that they are talking the entire class. They won't stay in their seat. You know who they are. Give them something to do, right? If you know they're talking, let them read the directions. If you know they're out of their seats, have them pass out papers, have them hold the door, you know, because as the students leave, you know, when they're holding the door, they're giving high fives. They're letting the kids know, you know, you're, you're, you're having to watch to assess, but that helps with managing the relationships, right? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a big one. Um, the next piece too, the next tool is troubleshooting. Um, please understand that these tools are not gonna always go right. Um, you know, this it's, you're dealing with people, you're dealing with humans, it's not gonna always go right. So you have to course correct and it is okay to course correct. Um, but going back to, you have to know yourself, right? Um, when things happen in the classroom, this tool of troubleshooting, I want to talk about what it looks like. So you've got the talkative student. He continues to talk, he or she, over you. They're not raising their hand. Um, matter of fact, they're just walking the aisles of the plane, okay? Like the seatbelt sign, they disregarded that. And so stepping in and realizing that you, number one, we have to make this student accountable. This student has to be accountable because they're functioning in a community, right? And the community has established guidelines. So stepping in and helping that student by saying, um, and I'm just using my name as an example, but stepping in and saying, Keila, real quick, I noticed you're, you're up out of your seat. Real quick, can you look at the board and tell me um, if you need to get out of your seat? what should you do? Give it a moment. You don't need to jump in, give them a moment because you need to help them. You're building accountability with, you know, helping them. Oh, oh, my bad. I see it. I'm supposed to raise my hand. They may make a joke out of it because you know that particular student, but you're not, you know, you're not playing into that. Right. So what do you need to do? I need to raise my hand. Thank you. Okay. So go back to your seat and let's try it again. And thank you so much for reading that. So they go back to their seat, they raise their hand. Great, Keila, thank you so much, I appreciate that. Where do you need to go? I need to go get a Kleenex. Okay, go over and get a Kleenex and then head back and get busy to what you were doing, okay? So that's just reinforcing, but it's building accountability. It's not back all on you, right? Um, yes. I just wanna jump in, one thing I really like about this, these techniques you're sharing is that you're kind of establishing that you're going to hold them accountable, um, but you're doing it in the best possible, most positive way. And I think that that, I mean, that has to be the most effective way to do it. Right. Because you're not really getting into like the power dynamic thing. Right. And something else I want to state within that, we have to understand, especially when we're in a one day assignment, that we are, we're the new kid on the block. These students have been functioning as a community for a very long time. So you're the new person and coming into this community. And there are going to be community members, aka students, that they're going to test you. Like, well, wait a second. We already know how this community works. So now you're here because the teacher's not here. So now you're here. I'm going to test you to see how far, because you're the new kid on the block. So we already know that. So if you know you go from zero to 100, now I've got to understand, okay, I'm new here. We don't get, we as subs, as educators, we don't get into power struggles with students. 
Okay, if I feel like this child is taking me there right now, okay, I'm gonna step over here, you know, and I'm gonna manage, you know, I'm gonna watch the room for here for a second, or I'm gonna, you know, get still, you know, you're understanding yourself as well in that. But please understand you all that we're coming into a community that we haven't been a part of. So there are going to be community members that they're gonna test us because they may not want us in the community. They may wanna kick us out of the community and they're gonna do everything they can. So you coming in to say, hey, I'm not here. I'm not here to you know, shake up things. I wanna get us to that destination as safely and, and quickly as possible and that everyone's safe in this learning environment. So when the next piece with the, the toolkit that plays into the previous one, when there are moments that you have to redirect, make sure you're able to redirect with accountability, especially, you know, those questions back on, um, on the board. Um, you know, so if the, 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 the restroom, getting out of their seats, asking questions, take them back to those established community guidelines that everyone spoke about, right? Um, and going back to that power struggle, please don't make it a power struggle because you will not win. <laughs> you will not win, especially with the high school kids. <laughs> and so if that power struggle is happening, um, being aware of that, but one thing I want to state is please, please, please refrain from calling students out. This is not your community yet right? You're new. So, and I'm going to focus on the high school real quick. So you've got a high school kid who is just, he's pressing, he's just pushing that border. He's pushing that line. So now you call him out in front of everyone. Wait a second. He knows these community members and now you've just called him out and you've been in here for an hour. It's not going to go well. So how do you address that now? Because he keeps pushing it. I've redirected him three times. He keeps talking over me. What that can look like and what that should is understanding that's a relationship. You don't want to be called out on things. So saying, Keely, can you come over here for a second? You know, so she comes over um, real quick. At the beginning of the class, you know, we all as a class went over, you know, our community guidelines. You know, if you have a question, if you need to get out of your seat, if you need to go to the restroom, you keep getting out of your seat. <laughs> Um, and so as a class, we said, if you do need to get out of your seat, raise your hand, but you're not doing that. Can you talk to me about what's going on? Stop talking and listen. I don't know. I'm just feeling some type of way about, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. If you don't know, let me know because then I can redirect you back to, but you know, the board, I do need you to raise your hand. Okay. And if there's anything I can help with, let me know. Okay, but right now we've got about 30 minutes left in class. I do need you to get back to your seat. And if you need to get out, raise your hand. If you need to get up, raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Get back to your seat. You've done that conversation aside. You haven't called him out in front of people. That's a game changer, you all. That's a relationship builder, right? And so you can have those side conversations, you know, maybe with the middle school student, um, you know, you're writing a post-it note. Hey, Keila, um, please remember rule number three, raise your hand. And you're writing that on a post-it note because I've got to keep my eyes on the rest of the class. I can't slow down with Keila and keep focusing on, I'm going to put this post-it note here and then I'm going to come do a check-in. Keila, did you read the post-it note? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay, make sure you're following that, okay? Going forward, we've got about 30 minutes left. I know you can do it, thank you. That's a relationship builder. That's classroom management. That's community building. They're great, great techniques. That's wonderful. Um, I know that last time we talked, you talked a little bit about um, a classroom affirm affirmation. Let's talk a little bit more about what that looks like and maybe what grades that would be appropriate for. Sure. Um, and then just, I wanna be respective of time. Should I sort of put them all together? These last couple of tips I wanna give. 
Um, yeah, I was kind of debating that too. I think that that sounds mm -hmm. good. And I know that people were really interested in cell phones. And we also got a question on um, Chromebooks when we get there. So that's a great okay. idea. Let's go ahead and put them together. Okay. So classroom affirmations is another tip, um, a tool within classroom management. And what that looks like is you, the students have entered the classroom before you jump in the day, really setting the tone. Classroom affirmation is setting the tone. Um, and please understand that grade appropriate. So what that classroom affirmation can be, can look like is, you know, before we jump into the day, you guys, Miss Smith left, left us a big lesson plan. So I'm letting you know right now, we got a lot of things we're gonna be learning today. Um, before we jump into that, I want us to have like a phrase we can use today, just so we can, we can focus on that. If someone's getting down or, if someone re, re, needs to refocus, what's a classroom sentence, you know, a phrase we can use? And you can have something already, you guys. You don't have to feel like, I don't want you to feel like that has to take up five minutes because now kids are, you know, yelling out answers. But you can just say, you know, you can have your affirmation of in this classroom, we learn as a community and we listen to each other. So let's just say you already have that as that is your affirmation you use middle school, elementary, high school, you use it across the board. So now that the kids are settled in, you guys, we've got a big lesson today. We've got a lot of things we've got to go over. Y'all are going to be doing a lot of writing. Just want to put that out there. But before we jump into it, I'm just going to write this down on the board. And when I write it down, I just want you to silently read it. And I want you to think about it. As a class, you know, we learn together and we respect each other. So you've written that down. You turn around, pause. Okay, did everyone have a chance to read that? Okay, and so today, while we're going on this journey, while we're in this learning environment together, um, I want you all to look at this. If you feel like, man, I'm just unfocused, go back and look at this. Before we begin the day, right now, we're just gonna, we're just gonna say it as a class together, right? And so you've said that that's relationship building, that's community building, that's classroom management, right? And please, please, please understand, it looks different elementary, middle school, and high school. So you may need to have three different versions, right? Um, just depending on the grade level that you're teaching at. Um, the other one, the other tool is pausing. And you all have heard me in, talk about this within these tools. Pause. A lot of the times we feel we need to fill the air. We need to be talking. We need to have the last word. I told you to sit down. Why are you back up? Pause. Because classroom management, we're, we're, we're giving these students, we're helping them with tools that they need outside of the classroom. And so they need think, thinking time. So when you ask that question of, you've been out of your seat three times, can you look back at the board and tell me which one of those, you know, you need to focus on to make sure you're paused? You know, and, and respectfully, you know, you're not doing four minute, five minute pauses, but put that pause in there, you know, to give the student time to think, to give you time to calm down as well, um, potentially, you know, just depending on the situation. But that is another tool in classroom management, just pause. And I will say this, even pause as a class. If you know that the class is just dragging, pause. Hey, you guys, stand up, let's just stretch. Pause. The other tool is being in the zone. And really what that means is the zone is you're moving around the classroom. You're able to put a bird's eye view on. You're able to know what's going on because you have control. I don't want to say control, but you have control of knowing what is taking place. We see it on planes with flight attendants when they're walking the aisles. Okay, they're seeing, okay, bags are under the, the seat, your bag's not, I need you to put your, you know, cell phone on airplane mode. So in the classroom, what that looks like is while students are working, you're not at the teacher's desk behind it. That is red flag number one, because they know now it's a free for all. You're in the zone, you're moving around, watching the students. Okay, Keila, you're on page eight, the, the class, we're on page 30. Yep, yes, ma'am. Can you turn to page 30 for me? If you're not in the zone and checking, 
he was going to be on page eight and then the work is not going to be done so you're moving around and that's not to say you all you need to be moving around constantly but you've got to be in it and that's really what the zone is you're in it um you know cell phones are protocol and expectations for our subs making sure your phone is off you're not on it because you the minutes you're on it they know things are acting up you know things are going to happen so you have to be in the zone monitoring and adjusting Keila was on page eight the rest of the class is on page 30. hey let's get on the right page you know a student's falling asleep you're not telling the student from behind the desk i need you to wake up you're going you're in the zone and tapping that student on their shoulder hey wake up stand up real quick go do a quick stretch you know something that i would do um, if i had a classroom that was by the water fountain um i would stand in the door still my eyes are on the class so i've got my eyes on the class and i've got my eye on the student and i would just tell him come over here real quick walk to the end of the hall get a drink of water and come back what huh i know walk to the hall because they need to move you know walk to the end of the hall get a drink of water and come back right um so but being in the zone you're able to notice those things so you got to be in it that is a part of classroom management and the last one cell phones so if you know cell phones have been an issue for you in assignments put that in your um community guidelines those, you know, restroom, getting out of your seat, put that in there. Um, but also understand what is the community rules regarding cell phones? Because don't think you can get in there and be like, um, don't, you know, if the teacher says they can have them out at a certain time, make sure you've read that um, beforehand. And then following up with that, what I would do just so students would know, like, I'm not, I'm not any different, respectfully, was you guys, I'm taking out my cell phone too. I'm I'm putting it on silent. But I would be honest with those conversations, especially with the high school students, because it's it's real. And so I my conversation with my high school students and middle school would sound like, hey, you guys, real quick, cell phones are real and we're attached to them. We've got 45 minutes in this class today. We have 90 minutes in this class today. So we know they need to be turned off. And I know they need to be turned off because Ms. Smith left that in the left, you know, in the rules for us. But if you know you're going to be tempted, so everyone, you know, please put your phone on silent. But if you know you're going to be tempted and you all know you, just turn it off. I promise you, you will be alive at the end of the 45 minutes today, at the end of the 90 minutes. I'm gonna do the same. I'm not too tempted by my cell phone, y'all. So I'm just gonna put mine on silent, but mine is going up to going up too. You know, and I would let especially my high school students know we all have a job today to do. I can't be on the job right now on my cell phone. You can't be on the job on your cell phone. Y'all, we gotta put them up. So this is for everyone right now. So please silence your phone. If you know you're gonna be tempted, just go ahead and shut it down because they really shouldn't be texting you anyway right now. That's a so great tip. Um, we do have a related question from Susan. What's your advice when a teacher leaves no directions about uh, students' use of their Chromebooks? I've had a student insist that their teacher let them play mind their teacher lets them play Minecraft or other video games when they finish mm -hmm. their assignment. Um, how do you manage something like that? Right. Great question. So one, you you already know you have in your game plan already in your toolbox a set of rule for technology, right? So if they don't, let me even go, we're learning, <laughs> we're learning. Like Minecraft, great, you can do that at home. We're learning right now, okay? And I wouldn't even get into all of that with them, but understanding, okay, I know if I show up, if they don't have anything, these are gonna be my top three things that I need to insert. So going back to that, if a student is stating that they're on the Chromebook, you know, Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate you sharing that. Right now, I do want to just, you know, I want to let the class know that this is a learning environment, okay? Um, that was not shared with me. So for this time frame, we will be focusing on, you know, the math program, or we will, you know, we're, we will, we will, we won't be using, we won't be playing video games, okay? When your teacher comes back, 
you know, you can speak with her about that. But while I'm here today with you all and guiding you all and helping you all, um, no games or we're, you know, we're not, we're not on games. And, you know, and just in, and the relationship you build with your kids, please don't come into the classroom trying to be the class clown, trying to win friends. They know. OK, you're not there for that. But let's just say you are on a long term assignment or you've been at this school and you develop that relationship like, you know, in that particular, you know, situation, you know, your students, they know you, you know, you can insert in, you know, at 3, 345 when school ends, Tommy, you can Minecraft it all day long, you know, but right now these 45 minutes, you know, I was not given that information, so but we are just going to be focusing on our work. But at 3 45 when school lets out, you know, Minecraft will be waiting for you. Thank you. Okay, get back to it. That's a great way to handle it. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Tasha. She's asking, can you give an example of positive reinforcement when students are playing tattletale on each other, which disrupts the lesson plans? Positive reinforcement when they are. Yeah, so I think um, what she's referring to is if a student is tattling on another to you. Um, how do we manage that? Sure. Okay. And I'm and 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 then can I just assume this is probably elementary? I, I'm gonna guess so because okay. It's yeah. Okay. Um. So a couple of things. Um. You know, depending on how many students, I'm gonna start with one student. If it is one student in particular, they just kept, keep continuing to come up and telling you. Um. You know, let them know. Thank you for letting me know. Um. And if you see that it's not a great concern. Um, implement something because you want to try to build a, you're trying to help the student build accountability, right? And so, you know, something you could say is, you know, Keila, thank you so much for sharing that. And you let me know a couple of times today, you know, things that are happening in class. What I want you to do, I'm going to put a post-it note on your table. And then I just want you to draw a star. Every time there is something going on and you need to tell me, you know, just draw a star. And then at the end of the class today, I'll count those stars, you know, you can count those stars and tell me how many there were and then share, you know, share something, you know, share two, three, two or three things with me. Um, but it's, so it's building that student. Okay. I can't always get up and go tell, right. Um, I've got to stay still and stay focused. So you're helping them with that. Um, but you're also giving them something to focus on and, you know, and also saying, Hey, I still see you and hear you. But now it's just going to, and you're not telling them all of this. I'm just saying this, but now it's just going to look different. So at lunchtime or at recess time, when we come back, you know, I want you to count the stars, you know, or you can do it however you want, you know, with stars or whatever, you know, and then, you know, count your stars and tell me how many, and then, you know, tell me, you know, two or three main things, you know, um, <clears throat> You know, if you feel you need to, if it is something serious where the kid is letting you know what the, you know, something that's going on, maybe there's a keyword, maybe there's a, a special like hand raise they can do when they wiggle their hand or something like that. Um, but it is putting it back on the student, right? So that they're not always coming to you, be it they have to write something down, you give them a hand gesture, um, they have a special pencil that they hold up or something like that. And if you still notice, okay, you keep putting up the pencil like every couple of seconds, have that conversation. You know, maybe you need to just write it down, but I need you focusing on your work and understand I'm watching them too. I'm watching the class too. Okay. So yeah. That's a really great way to handle that because you're maintaining that connection with them, but also you know, kind of giving them an outlet for it with the post-it right. note but at the same time, being able to get on with your lesson. Right. Yeah, and I encourage y'all, keep some post-it notes, you know, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, get some, you know, keep them in your bag. Post-it notes are real. You can do so much with them. <laughs> That's great. I know we're getting really, we're actually a little bit over and I know you're on um, Dallas time, so I don't want to mm -hmm. keep you too late. Um, but I would like to know, are there any further recommended readings, websites, videos that um, we can share with folks? Yes, I don't want to bombard you all, um, but I do want to mention a couple. So, um, and I have one, I have a couple books that I want to share with you. Um, if you are a book reader, a book lover, you've got to see it highlighted, right? This one right here is called, 
Uh, how do I? <laughs> Um, I can type it in the chat and we'll okay. also be sharing this um, in the help center and sending it out. So I can. Okay. Always so it's called better than carrots, better than carrots or sticks. And it's restorative practices for positive classroom management. Um, and like Michelle said, she will post it in there, but it's just amazing. Um, a lot of what I've taken from my experience in education primarily is restorative practices that I've embedded as a key piece of classroom management. And so it's giving you um, tips, it's giving you those tools about creating community through like everyone is seen and heard here, but we work as a community, we work together in this. So this one is amazing. Um, Visual. Um, so let me throw out something for visual. If you want to watch a video, if, you know, put it on in the background. So on YouTube, well, let me say the name first. So Ron Clark, he has been around for many years. He has a school based in Atlanta. But Ron Clark, if you go to YouTube and type in Ron and R-O-N, um, Ron Clark Classroom Management, great videos on classroom management. Um, he has books out. Um, he's just been in the game for a very long time and he works, he just, he builds community and relationships within his schools and classes. He's just great. Um, another person is Harry Wong, W-O-N-G. So you can YouTube him, type in classroom management. Um, he has um, some books out. Um, so both if you want to, you know, watch videos um book wise great resources and then also as like the educator bible is uh the website ASCD so apple sam carrot I don't want to say discipline for D I want to be <laughs> but uh, yeah ASCD um, a lot of great resources it is a great go-to place because it um, focuses on um, research based what's happening in education, um, things we need to be doing, things that schools, great things that schools are doing, how we're learning, has shifts everything and above. Also, the better than carrots or sticks, a lot of the educational books are offered at a discount. If you are a member, they have a digital magazine as well as print. Um, it's just, it's, it's a great resource and go to. Um, so, yeah, those are a couple of resources for you all to help you along this journey and strengthening in the classroom with classroom management. It looks like one person, Jen, you had raised your hand and for the life of me, I'm having a hard time finding you um, to allow you to, to speak. But if you wanted to um, type your question in the Q&A, then we could answer it. And then um, give her a couple seconds to do that. And then if that doesn't happen, then I think I probably need to let you go. It's um, this has been like a gold mine of information. Awesome. I'm really Thank excited you. to share this. And um, I think we should also put it on our blog and write it out. It'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it looks like those are all the questions for now. Thank you so much. I'm sorry we kept you later, but this has been absolutely um, enlightening for me. And um, I'm sure all the people who showed up. Yeah. Thank you all so much. I enjoyed this. Um, you know, I'm here as a substitute teacher coordinator. So any questions along this journey, please, please, please reach out. Um, please reach out. I'm here to support you all and yeah, to help you all in the classroom so that you can be successful in all assignments and on the campuses. Thank you all so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, bye. Bye everyone.